people are ready for this shit, dude. I've been working on this video for the past year, and I'm not exaggerating. The idea, using only currently existing technology and VR hardware, I'd put everything together to make an actual, real-life, working, ready player one setup to use in VR. To prove that with a large enough budget and with off-the-shelf items, the Oasis really isn't that far. And I wanted to be the first person to essentially recreate ready player one in a usable setup. And well, not everything goes according to plan, and while making this video, I've realized a few really big problems, and unexpectedly came across a few things holding back not only my Ready Player One project, but pretty much identifying one of the biggest problems across the entire VR industry. So about $10,000, 300 days, and a whole new perspective later, here's everything I've learned that will need to happen to make this virtual reality become a reality. First, I think we should get some background as to what I'm trying to accomplish and why. On the philosophical side of things, your reality is practically a sum of your perceptions, or the process of becoming aware of something through the senses. We live our lives seeing, touching, smelling, feeling, and hearing things, and those things make up what we view as reality. And that's when the idea of virtual reality becomes really interesting. What if there was a technology that could emulate those things, to stimulate your senses enough to make you feel like the simulation you're in is real. At that point, you could do anything, be anywhere, it's up to you or the developer's imagination. And in case you're unaware of the depth Ready Player One takes with its oasis, the virtual world of Ready Player One, let's just imagine a simple comparison. Let's take World of Warcraft, the largest online massively multiplayer role-playing game. Currently in WoW, you control a character while sitting at a desk, staring at a screen, and you can be immersed, but you'd never believe you were in Azeroth. Now take the concept of World of Warcraft and imagine the most immersive virtual reality experience possible. You become the character. You can smell the roses, but also the burning cataclysm. You can physically train to become better at technical skills. You'd interact with other players by looking at them in the eyes. And you can feel the chill at night and the warmth of the sun. At that point, you are no longer playing a game set in Azeroth anymore. You are in Azeroth. And that's a lot of what VR is at its core, or at least what we want it to be. And in science fiction, there's plenty of reference material to go off of what VR could be, but Ready Player One is probably the closest to being real. The oasis within the movie and books essentially being a massively massive online role-playing game where people practically live within. You can fly DeLoreans, take part in a million-person battle royale, or just go to school or check out one of the millions of planets, but that's just the software part, which we'll get back to in a second, but the hardware of Ready Player One is even less far-fetched. From what we see in the movie, the characters use a VR headset, check, omnidirectional treadmill, check, haptic suit, full body tracking, haptic force feedback gloves, and sense to smell what's happening in VR. Check, check, and check. And with my entire setup using some of the most cutting edge VR hardware, the bill would run around ten dollars to $20,000. The most expensive components being the headset using a Vario XR3 and enterprise grade haptic gloves. I'm also using a full body haptic setup from B Haptics so I can feel stimuli on my arms, legs, chest, and back, and a haptic solution Celia, a device that can reproduce sense from virtual objects. I can smell a rose in VR or worse. And to be honest, all of it together sounds really great and checks all of the boxes, but here is where I ran into my first of problems and where I start seeing probably one of the biggest fundamental problems with VR right now. Something that sooner or later is going to have to be fixed because none of this stuff works with each other. Some software works with some hardware and some with others, but none of it works like you'd expect. And it's really hard to blame anyone here. Software developers have absolutely no incentive to add hardware support for a haptic vest that only 1% of their audience owns. And hardware developers have absolutely no incentive to make things that only 1% of consumers will even buy. So most of this stuff, like the gloves, are just business-to-business -business sales packaged with custom-made software skipping over game support and the consumer audience entirely. And there's a very clear solution to all of these problems that I'll get into in just a moment, but at problem one, the entire Ready Player One project was nearly killed, but I did in fact get almost everything working in just a couple of apps, and for the first time, I got just about as close to a Ready Player One experience as possible. 20 years before the movie set. And before putting on all the gear, I could only imagine how immersive VR would be with all of this stuff. If I played Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, for example, I would be able to feel the weapons in my hands and feel when a zombie hit me, then physically run away and smell the gunpowder as I fired upon the undead, but that's not what happened. 
Actually, putting on all this stuff and getting it to work together was a massive pain. I mean, some people say even putting on a VR headset is too much friction for most users. But try putting on three trackers, five haptic devices, setting up a sense station, strapping yourself into an omnidirectional treadmill, putting on gloves, then putting on a headset, then realizing that one tracker is dead so you gotta do it all over again. And then, just to get Boneworks to work with everything, I had to heavily mod it to add support for all the peripherals I was adding. But when I did actually get it to work, everything kind of suddenly became worth it. Well, almost worth it. I mean, I don't think I can personally get any more immersed, at least not in Boneworks, than physically running around a virtual world, getting slapped around by null bodies with 2020 VR vision, and for the first time actually smelling the gunpowder and feeling the frantic urgency of being followed by a herd of enemies. This was something totally new, and the graphics weren't hyper-realistic, the sensations didn't feel like actually getting slapped, the gunpowder didn't smell exactly right, but when you tie everything together, something pretty magical happens. None of my senses have to be exactly perfectly recreated. My brain just kind of puts everything together into one experience, and that experience can only be described as being in Boneworks, unlike I've ever been in a game before. And honestly, in that moment, I didn't want to go back to reality. After putting on all this gear and getting sweaty from running around for probably close to miles, I was invested in loving every second, and it was actually pretty shocking sense-wise to lift up the headset and just see my apartment after feeling like I was somewhere else in every sense, literally. Dude. Smell, vision, hearing, feeling, I had it all. But single player Boneworks is one thing, if I'm trying to emulate the Oasis from Ready Player One, a single player shooter just isn't going to cut it. So I got into VRChat, probably the absolute closest thing we have to an Oasis. Thousands of players, seemingly endless worlds to run around, you could be anywhere and be anything. And for just a few split seconds, almost everything was working. A custom VRChat world allowed me to smell all sorts of things in my environment. The haptic suit allowed me to get touched by people in VR. I had full body tracking on so I could see my body move one to one. A treadmill allowed me to walk for an infinite distance and my reaction, I don't get it, it it's just what I did, I don't know, but I just, I just ran. Like just took off, ran into the distance until I couldn't run anymore physically. With the music playing and the visuals and the weird emotions running through me, I know it might sound goofy and weird, but it just felt so surreal running off into the virtual horizon, either until it ended or I was too tired to keep going and, uh, well. I don't know, I'm kind of lost for words, I'm not gonna lie. Everything takes so much more effort. So much more effort. I mean, look, I'm literally like dripping in sweat right now. But every ounce of effort means you get like twice the reward for it. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know if, I don't know if people are ready for this. I don't know if people will go outside anymore. Everything is just better in some ways. Of course, it's worse in a lot of ways, but it's better in some ways. I don't know if people are ready for this shit, dude. And then, with perfect timing, everything started acting up. My gloves stopped functioning entirely, the Celia scent module completely died, my tracking started glitching out, and seriously, VR chat servers actually went down temporarily that day. And I was just kind of left with this surreal feeling afterwards. That was crazy. And I really only got a very small taste of it for a few minutes of what that level of sensual immersion feels like in VR, to have your body, eyes, ears, nose, all in a virtual reality experience, but it was profound. Although, it was far from perfect. I'd kind of like to say that this experiment was a success, not a failure, even though it did kind of fail as a proof of concept. I mean, I really only got a few minutes to internalize everything, and half of the hardware isn't even working anymore, and even when it did, the software support was really spotty. But it's given me a lot of insight into what needs to be done to solve these problems. And I'll talk about version 2 of this experiment, and how I'm going to make it even bigger and better, but let's talk about the fundamental problems first. Getting everything to consistently work together is nearly impossible right now. Even with mods or clients or Udon or OSC support within VRChat, I'm still dealing with dozens of SDKs from different manufacturers and modding everything individually to work. And it doesn't have to be this way. In fact, there's no way in the future it should be this way. For us to have a Ready Player One-like experience across all VR software, there needs to be a standard that all games fundamentally follow, allowing any and all hardware following those standards to be used predictable.
visibly. Collisions between player models, temperature changes, textures of textures, weights of objects, intensity of the pain or pleasure, the smell of certain things, etc. All of this data needs to be standardized to be accessed and mapped, so support doesn't need to be added, it just works fundamentally. Sort of like how OpenXR ensures compatibility between VR headsets and software, but on a way larger scope. Almost like the VR laws of physics, tying software and hardware together in a predictable way. Also, just naturally, game selection isn't all that great in VR in general, let alone games that support all of this extra stuff. VRChat and Neos do a pretty good job of allowing anybody to kind of do anything, but it's nowhere near Oasis level of object interactions and world persistence. Closest thing we have by a long shot, but not quite there. But now that I know what I need to make this experiment viable, I think we're gonna have to revisit this in the future and push this absolutely as far as possible. Since recording the original video, like I said, this has been a year-long project. I have been working with companies to expand this experiment to get as close to Ready Player One as possible. So far on this list, I have a pair of force feedback gloves from Contact CI that they let me borrow. I should have a Tesla suit on the way, the world's most advanced VR electrostimulation suit, and a new and improved Celia for VR scent control. But the real work is actually not in the hardware. It's making a controlled simulation that I can use to put everything together. We're going to have to build an immersive world, maybe in VR chat to use everything all in one place while also adding proper eye and face tracking. And all in all, I really don't recommend going out and buying all of this. Actually, really, don't do it. Like, seriously. You'll find out the hard way that nothing actually works right, and that's due to a few big gaping problems with VR right now. And to be totally real, current VR headsets are good enough. Like, you could do this on an index and it's almost no different. And there really aren't even enough games that fully utilize the hardware we currently have, which is honestly probably VR's actual biggest problem right now. There's just not enough good games with deep interactions and longevity. But if this experiment did show us anything, even if it pretty much failed, took way too long, and cost way too much, it's that we're really not all that far off from Ready Player One style VR. We're actually right there. And I could really see us being at that level in just a few years to be honest. That is, if people even care to have so much friction just to get in VR. And if software works better with hardware. And if hardware gets a lot cheaper. And if better, bigger games and software come to VR. That's a lot of ifs. But my biggest takeaway from all of this is that none of it has to be perfect to have a profound experience. Minutes of a half-baked duct tape solution gave me an altered perception of VR. The brain can be easily tricked into believing you're in a completely virtual world, and it can get a lot better than that and than this. Like I said, I will be revisiting this with a much better solution, but I couldn't really hold this one back any longer. Definitely subscribe if you want to see more of this sort of stuff, and like this video if you liked it, of course, it really helps a lot. And I wanted to say thank you to Vario for letting me borrow this headset, and really thank you to my Patreon supporters. I couldn't do any of this sort of stuff without you guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. We've got a very interesting virtual reality future ahead of us, and I just hope we're all ready for it. But until next time, much love, thrill out.